Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of how I painted Shenandoah River. We just returned from a very nice camping vacation at the Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. All the beautiful sights that I saw there were fresh in my mind. And as I walked through the studio to unpack some supplies, I happened to have a catch of an old painting that was laying around that I'd saved. It was all torn and chewed by my dog, but some of the colors were so nice. Anyway, I got an inspiration, and that's how this video occurred. I hope you enjoy it. It was fast, it was easy, and it was a pleasure to paint. Please give it a thumbs up, and now let's paint. So here's the paper that I saw. It was pretty chewed, but just a section of it caught my eye, and I felt a tree feeling. Now, could I save this little section and cut the chew marks off and some of the torn edges? So using my ruler, I made some outlines to cut. See what I could save here. While we were camping at Shenandoah National Park, we went down into the valley and took a beautiful hike along the Shenandoah River. I took a lot of photographs, as I always do. And one of the photographs was from a dock where people went in on tubes or boats or kayaks. And it reminded me so much of this little view right here. Since the colors were so nice, I thought I could make it work. Where would I put the horizon line where the river was? How much should be sky and how much should be water? These are all the things I'm trying to figure out as you see me working with the ruler and the other straight edge. And I made a commitment. I said, let's go with this. I'll save the other pieces. Maybe I'll make it into something else. For right now, it's time to tape it down. This is t getting taped down to a backing board so the edges won't ripple and the paint painting won't ripple when it gets wet. All taped down with some scotch tape, which I found works out pretty well for a smaller piece of paper. I haven't used it on a big piece. The first thing I do after establishing my horizon line is begin to paint where the mountain rises up over the river in the distance. I take that horizon line right on across, and then I begin to remove some paint where the darkness is. What I want to do is show where the edge of the water hits the edge of the land. So removing paint allows a slight faint line of lightness. And that will support where the reflective quality of the water goes against the land and then begins. After that's set, I begin to paint some more dark, low trees along the horizon line and define what's already there. The mountains of this area really do appear blue when seen through the atmospheric haze. So if you hear them called the blue mountains, they really do appear to be blue. After I've established that horizon line, I begin to fill in and define a little bit more clearly the trees that are rising up from the land. Now you can see that where I want the water to be, the reflections are already there from the previous painting that was destroyed. 
So it's a matter of tying it all together and making a division or a separation between the land and the water. Now I'm darkening right along the edge of the land with a low line of bushes. I've darkened some of the trees. I've made a slight break in the horizon. So that one little section of land appears to be jutting out in front of the others. With the forms already stated out from the previous painting, it's not taking me a lot of work to do. The previous painting was done wet on wet and was just a beginning painting when the dog got a hold of it. To establish the water down below, I'm going to take out some streaky lines by removing some paint across. I paint in with a damp brush and then I blot it off. Anywhere I want a streaky lighter colored line, that's what I'm doing. I'm using my photograph as a reference. In my photo, the colors were not nearly as lovely as this. They were a daytime photo with a very blue sky. But I could certainly use my imagination and the color is already there. But I used the photo for the structure and the composition and to look at how the lines on the water, the horizontal lines, went across. Each horizontal line and each reflection that I enhance establishes more firmly that there is water in this river. When I pull a reflection down, I am trying to make it squiggle sideways. Almost like a zigzag. I'm enhancing some of my values in the land to make the trees stand out a bit more. And of course, then I have to do the corresponding reflection for each area I add to the tree above into the water below. Reflections can be broken, they can be discontinuous, but they have to be there in some way to show that this is water reflecting land in the sky. I'm adding a couple of trunks suggested showing through the trees, and then reflecting below as well. This seems to provide just a bit more structure, and some more color is needed in the tall tree on the left.
And so little by little, the land and the water are coming together and joining a very nice play of color and form. For the last part of my painting process, I want to balance out the composition, which is a little heavy on the left, with a bit more weight on the right. My photographic reference had some weeds coming off with shoreline in front of the water, and I decided I was going to include them. The right hand side seemed like the best place. I began to paint them on the left as well and it didn't look right to me. So I took that off with some damp brushwork and some blotting. Now I've mixed up some indigo and some hooker's green deep and a little bit of purple to make a good dark color. I'm painting in the edge of the land and then I'm bringing up some weeds and grass fronds. And I'm taking a lot of care to get them just right because I'm painting over this beautiful colored water that's already there. And I don't want to mess up those colors. Something I found is very important and that is to make these kind of delicate weeds in the foreground very thin. You could certainly thicken them later if needed. But if you make them very clunky or, or very, very thick, and they look too thick and not right, it's hard to take them off again. So take your time and make it thin. Build up more if you need it. Those weeds went on quickly and easily. I enhanced the clouds a little bit in the sky to add a little bit more interest. Now I'm enhancing the blue of the mountain just a little bit. Back to the reflections once again. I'm enhancing and accenting them just a little bit more. I'm satisfied. I'm going to sign it and it is done. I hope you enjoyed my painting, Shenandoah River, and how I took you through the steps of how I did it. I had an advantage in starting with something that already had beautiful colors on it from a previous painting that my dog chewed up. I hope you'll ring the bell and subscribe and not miss any future videos. There's some other links below that you can check out too if you'd like to see some of the products I use or products I make or a link to my Facebook art page, amongst some other things. Keep on painting, and I'll see you next video.